Sorry about you can't come in here. <laughs> well, Just for women. You, you know, I, 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 I'm actually going to be on actions today. Um, but I'm going to finish up with word. Uh, makes me mad. Let's see if I can do this. Makes me mad when people are saying things against what God says. Makes me mad. I want to go slap people even if they're my wife which I wouldn't do, okay? I just have to say that, all right? Here, here's the thing, you know, because I would never do that. I've never laid my hands on her like that. It, it, it says in Proverbs 18, a man's stomach, verse 20 and 21, a man's stomach will be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. He will be satisfied with the consequence of his words. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it and indulge in it will eat its fruit and bear the consequences of their words. I'm ending, up, I'm ending my conversation about words. Remember, we're going from, from thoughts to words, words to actions, actions to habits, habits to character, character to destiny. So we've gone through the first couple of milestones. Words are extremely important. We give the enemy permission to trample in our lives with the wrong words, and we give God permission to come in and work miracles when we use his words. I uh, watched my brother. My, I, I called him my baby brother. He came out of his uh, stupor enough to say, you can't call me your baby brother. I said, well, seeing that you're in North Carolina, and I'm here, and I can pretty much call you whatever I want, okay? And I said, so anyway, watching my kid brother face off uh, against death with I will not die but live and declare the works of the Lord, I am in awe of the faith of the Lion of the tribe of Judah, Jesus Christ, roaring out of my brother Alan. Uh, Tracy made reference to this. Um, we, were, we were a couple of couple of kids who were kind of on the fringe of the outside edge of God, and we went to uh, the San Jacinto Monument outside of Houston. Anybody know where that is? Oh, yeah. Okay, all right. So we went out there, and and we we looked. This this wasn't something that you, that you that was like it was like doing a a four bank shot from a hundred yards away, you know, on a pool table. Uh, and the Lord spoke something that we did not understand to us at that point in time. It was a vision. He was giving us a vision for the future, a vision to, to have an impact, a positive impact on the world. And we were just excited because part of our vision was we got to have 280Zs. Um, that's, that's a car, for those of you who don't know. It was made by a company called Datsun, which is now called Nissan, for some unknown reason. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> Yes, indeed, yeah. Dotsons became Nissans, and, uh, and, and, uh, and I had a friend of mine who was in Cleveland, Ohio, who was a mechanic, and he had done, he had taken a 280Z and he'd made it a three liter, for those of you who understand what that, just means more horsepower, and on the inside of it, he made it so that you could adjust the fuel injection from inside the cab, and how I know how well it worked is he said, hey, Mike, his name was Tom Zorro, he's like this big, and about this wide. I saw him once, I walked into the, I walked into the uh, uh, shop where he was working and he's, and he's putting, a, he's putting the, the, the nuts on a, on a transmission housing and he's got his shoulder holding the transmission into place. Okay, do not mess with Tom. His, his nickname was Zero because Zorro was a little hard for some people. They would call him Zorro and he didn't like that. So Zero was his name. So he said, I said, would you go for a ride with me? And I said, yes. I you will. Hit two people that big in that 280. Oh man! I yes, we that. did. I yes, we did. That. We did get in there, and and he's he's like this. Okay, we're going down the road like this, and and he does a U-turn. We're going on Route Two toward Bowling Green, out of out of Cleveland, and he does a U-turn, and he says, "Okay, now we're going to see what it can do." Okay, you know how if you've ever been where they have ice that that little. That little strip in between the concrete on the roads kind of makes a little hump in the middle of the road. We were catching air over those little humps. And, and there was a, an Ohio State Highway Patrolman off on the right-hand side. And I'm going, hey, Tom, Tom, zero, hey, hey. He said, no, no, it's part of it. 
And so we go, we go zooming past the guy. He comes out around behind us. And he says, so, and so the cop pulls up. It was a setup. He said, how fast was I going? 205. 205 on the ground, okay? And, and I wasn't driving. It, it was scary. If I had been driving, it would have been a different story, but it wasn't, I wasn't driving. So, so I, I, uh, in, in the past few years, this vision began to come into, into focus. Because, as some of you know, the, the story, I was out on the beach in Galveston Island after I spent 10 years serving the Lord in this church that turned into a homeless shelter. And I was mad because he had shut it, he had allowed it to shut down. You know, and, and, and I told him I wanted to fix this problem on a much larger scale, like across the country. I wanted an, an end to involuntary homelessness. I've said it before. There are people who are voluntarily homeless. That's up to them. But there are a bunch of people who aren't. Okay, and Jesus is the answer for them. And, uh, and, and, and it's something that takes a lot of people who are connected and focused to get that done, but it takes a lot of resources. And, and so then he took me on this tour in my life where I got to see things and look at things that I hadn't done before. I had spent a little bit of time as a chief operating officer for an engineering company, and I got to look at some technologies I hadn't seen before, and, and I began to put bits and pieces in my head and say, okay, Lord, maybe this is the path that you're bringing this revenue through to be able to take care of the homeless. Well, in 2014, I got focused on refugees, and still not absolved of my responsibility with the homeless, but we have refugees who are contacting us, who are brothers and sisters in Christ, saying, hey, can you help us? Can you pray for us? Can you get us where we need to go? Uh, and, and so as I saw this, I saw the, the, the demand for resource growing in my mind and in my heart. And, and, and the Lord said, well, you're only seeing a part of it. I want, I want to really fix this, and, and we're going to need a base of operations. And so he picks this place. So this is a base of operations. And what's the, what is the purpose of the, this base of operations? God is not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. All right? We have a responsibility. You don't just get to show up here on Sundays and hear something and sing something and feel good about yourself and leave. No. That's not what you get to do. You've got to take upon yourself the responsibility that the Lord gave you, you and me, to go into all the world and make disciples, to preach the gospel to everybody. We, we need to be about the Father's business. All right, so I've been seeing this technology crop up, and I'm, I'm seeing him do some amazing things. He's got us into this place where this manufacturing plant can be up and running and, and creating revenue for some of the things that we want to do, maybe many of the things that we want to do. I don't know where he's bringing resources from. I just see that as being part of it. And I, and I have been waking up a lot at night, and this Psalm 34 has been ringing in my head. I've, I've, uh, I just, I don't have my, I do have one. I said, I don't have a Bible up here. They disappeared. Let me, let me, read, let me read some of this, because um, this is just kind of like fresh stuff that's, coming right out of uh, the Spirit here. I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. Do you know where I got really familiar with that? Uh, Paul and Jan Crouch on, on TBN. That was the way they ended every single broadcast. They would begin most of their broadcasts. I will praise the Lord at all times. All right, His praise will always be on my lips. My soul will boast in the Lord let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Where have we heard those words in just the last few minutes? And so that comes up in my spirit. And, and the way to get to what mission that the Lord has in store for me and for us is we have to, we have to move from our words into action. All right? So we have to be thinking about action. It does start. It does start with words, but I want to share another scripture with you real quick. I just I quoted part of it earlier, Isaiah 43, 18 and 19. Do not remember the former things or ponder the things of the past. Listen carefully. I am about to do a new thing. Now it will spring forth. Will you not be aware of it? I will even put a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. That, you know, it, it's up to us to focus on him. 
we have to bring our focus back around to the Lord because without Him, we can do nothing. But the Word says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It talks in Isaiah 43 about, behold, I'll do a new thing. I want to tell you something. Being a pastor here was way different in a lot of ways than being a pastor at this church that turned into a homeless shelter. I, I felt like I was at a buffet. I got Episcopalians and Presbyterians and Baptists and Catholics and, 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 and there was a part of me that felt like I needed to appease everybody. It's not my job to appease you, in case you were wondering. All right. And, and so what we're going to see going forward into the future is there'll be, God's got to make some adjustments. You know, the, the, this is what I've learned about sports and what I've learned in business. When you stop getting better, you stop being good. All right, so we need to focus on how do we refine and shine and not, and not just settle for the way things are. We're pioneers. We live in a pioneer country. The settlers, they, they, they hung out down by the rivers and, and, in the, and in the open coastal plains. Okay, pioneers live here. Everybody who's here is a pioneer. M most of us can't even, I can't think of going back and living in a city again. I just can't. I, I had. I, I was telling. I was. I, I was telling Aretha earlier. We were listening to this Psalm 34. And and don't you love that one guy? I mean, when you see it right at the beginning of it, you've got this big giant smile. I wanted to go just because I went. That guy smiles Jesus better than anybody I have ever seen. You know, I want to smile Jesus like that. And we and we need to focus on that. But I, I'm. We're going into actions, and I'm taking you into Matthew chapter 22. We got several scripture references. You'll notice that my computer is closed, so I'm I'm re I'm really working uh, in the spirit here. I don't have any notes. The Lord said, "Put your notes aside. I have something I want to deliver this morning." So, so what we're talking about is all of these things we've talked about and sung and said and participated in so far. If you are not born again, you don't understand it. You must be born again. Absolutely, the principle effort that we have to make is to get that message to everybody. They're not going to hear it necessarily in those words, but if we'll demonstrate the kindness of God. By the way, um, uh, Randy and Tana were over taking care of Marilyn's place, uh, and, and, the, and the water is pretty much almost there. I mean, she's got water in her bathroom and water in her oh, sink, and, and we're seeing some other stuff happen. And, and you know why? Because they have a heart for the widow and the orphan and the stranger. That has to be all of us. You know, we have to be looking out for the least of these. Jesus said, whatever you do to one of the least of these, my brethren, you do to me. So we have to be careful about how we carry our thoughts and our words, our demeanor and our actions. All right, so here we are in Matthew chapter 22, beginning in the 36th verse. I'm reading out of the Amplified today. Matthew 22, beginning in the 36th verse. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And Jesus replied to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. So you want to know what action items look like for you? We've gone from thoughts into words. Let me tell you what your next action item is. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and mind and strength. That's your action item. Okay, make that a habit. That will, that will directly affect your character, which will directly affect your destiny. You hear what I'm saying to you today? Amen, Pastor. All right. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. That is, unselfishly seek the best or hire good for others. The whole law and the writings of the prophets depend on these two commandments. <clears throat> this is extremely important. If you're looking for action items, God just gave you two critically important action items. And you should be. Because you're not just called, Christianity is not a spectator sport. You know, I, years ago, I went, I, went to, I went to this church and, and, you know, they had a Starbucks in it. Literally a Starbucks in the church. And I went, okay, that's cool. But here's what happens. You know, and I'm not saying that having a Starbucks, you will not go to hell for having a Starbucks in your church. All right. All right. But here's the thing. What, what we have to realize is, is the focus, is the focus people pleasing? Are we out trying to make sure we can get as many people in the community to buy our brand so that we can pay for our building so that we can continue, 
this man maneuver of capitalism that we're thinly disguising as a 501c3 nonprofit. You know, what are, what are we about? What's, what's our focus? Is it Starbucks? You know, do we then have Taco Bell delivering so people have, you know, what they want for lunch? You know, or are or, or some gourmet meal delivered? And, and it's gone to programs. And a lot of programs benefit the, the specific groups. I mean, we have, we have ladies' meetings, we have men's meetings, but if that's the focus, if our focus is just camaraderie, we've missed the point, okay? We've missed the point because we're supposed to love the Lord our God with all of our heart and soul and mind and strength, and we're supposed to love our neighbor as ourselves. Just providing them what they need and what they perceive that they need in the form of a Starbucks. By the way, we don't have a Starbucks, but we did because of my wife's astute study on the Keurig downstairs, found out that there was wax buildup in the little drain where the water goes in, so it now works. So if you want a cup of coffee, you can, I know, probably from one of the cups, somebody poured a hot liquid in, and the wax came off of the cup and ended up. Anyway. I know you believe you understand what you think I said, but I'm not sure you realize what I said is not what I intended. Okay, hopefully that made some sense. If not, if it made sense, I'm concerned for you. John chapter 13, beginning in the 34th verse. You know, when I came here and I got to hear Lloyd Lowe every week, he hammered, he hammered what we just hammered in, in Matthew. He hammers what in John, and what we're reading now in John chapter 13. Uh, and verse 34, I am giving you a new commandment that you love one another just as I have loved you, so you too are to love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love and unselfish concern for one another. All right, actions. We've taken our thoughts. You know, the, the warm kumbaya moments of coming in and singing Christmas carols, that's great. I'm glad we have that. I'm glad that we can be lifted. I'm reminded when I sing some of those songs, I'm reminded of Christmases with my brothers and sisters younger, Christmases when my, my kids were younger, Christmases when I had to play Santa Claus at the Nigerian church, okay, when I was 100 pounds heavier. All right? So I'm reminded of those things, but that's not the reason we're here. The, the reason we're here is to celebrate the birth, life, death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ. The, the, the it is finished ministry that, that was proclaimed over, over his work and over all our work as we submit ourselves to him. When he was on the cross, it is finished. All right. So love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and mind and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love one another as I love you. That's pretty clear. All right. Well, let's backtrack a little bit. Uh, the lady that the Dana Carvey's uh, uh, church lady on Saturday Night Live. Um, y you know, you you can be venomous towards somebody, and and and, and go up to them, and, and isn't that special? <laughs> God bless your heart. And you don't mean a doggone thing you're saying. That's not loving the Lord and loving your neighbor and loving one another as Christ loves us, just in case you were wondering. Okay? Let's go to 1 John chapter 2. This is going to be like, I feel like I'm on a, in a lightning round here. 1 John chapter 2, beginning in 1 John chapter 2, and I think just the 6th verse. I don't know how much I got here. 1 John chapter 2, beginning in the 6th verse. Whoever says he lives in Christ, that is, whoever says he has accepted Him as God and Savior, ought as a moral obligation to walk and conduct himself just as he, Jesus, walked and conducted himself. The one who says he is in the light, in consistent fellowship with Christ, and yet habitually hates, works against his brother in Christ, is in the darkness until now. The one who loves and unselfishly seeks the best for his believing brother lives in the light, and in him there is no occasion for stumbling or offense. He does not hurt the cause of Christ or lead others to sin. You've got to be careful. You know, passing judgment. And, and, then, and, then, and then I hear, you know, uh, you ever go, anybody ever seen a bullfight? I've seen one. All right. I saw one bullfight. And, and, and you've got a bunch of people down there with sharp instruments 
trying to make this giant bull man. All right? Why would you want to do that to God? Why would you be picking at God by thinking thoughts that are contrary to the love of God and the love of your neighbor and the love of your brother and sister, and then use little words and little phrases to try to draw them into some sort of an antagonistic display. And you know you do it. Don't you? Some of us in here have. Stop it. Stop it. You don't, you don't, go to, you don't have peace by trying to pick a fight. You don't have peace by trying to put someone in their place. You need to let God do His part. You do your part. That's when I've, you know, this last week as I've been thinking about, as I've been thinking about my brother, week and a half, you know, everything that, everything that, I, that I have to do in my life that has to do with my marriage, my family, my brother, this church, the, the work that he has, that he has for me to do, I can only do this when I allow him to do it through me. I can't, I can't do this. And, and, when, and when I step in, when I step in and try and take control, Holy Spirit is a gentleman and He'll let me take control until I go, until I hear Him saying, have you had enough yet? You, you want me to handle this or you want to keep doing this one-handed boxing thing that you got going on? By the way, we had three successful classes and, and faithful to the core this week. Uh, and, and we got some people coming from the community. So keep that in prayer. Um, I want you to go to Psalm 37. We've talked about love and the importance of love. Extremely important. Love is not just a word. It's an action. It, it, it is, it's, it's important for us to carry out what that love means. Sometimes it means listening quietly and respectfully and lovingly to somebody you really don't care about. You have to foster that care inside of you. You have to learn to love. Love is learned by by doing. You can study it. You can read about it. You can have somebody show you what it looks like. But until you start doing it, you really don't learn it. And the only way you can really learn it is by letting him love you in all of the brokenness that your life represents and all of the wholeness that he wants to bring to your life. You have to be willing to let him do that. How do you do this? Psalm 37, beginning in the third verse. Trust, rely on, and have confidence in the Lord, and do good. Dwell in the land, and feed securely on His faithfulness. Delight yourself in the Lord, and He will give you the desires and petitions of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in Him also, and He will do it. He will make your righteousness, your pursuit of right standing with God like the light, and your judgment like the shining of the noonday sun. Be still before the Lord. Wait patiently for Him and entrust yourself to Him. Do not fret, whine, and agonize because of Him who prospers in His way, because of the man who carries out wicked schemes. Cease from anger and abandon wrath. Do not fret, it only leads to evil. For those who do evil will be cut off, but those who wait for the Lord, they will inherit the land. So from love, we go to trust. That's pretty hard for some people. Trusting anybody. Do you ever? Uh, I remember in in high school, probably a youth group, and uh, and 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 they would have, they would have, they would have somebody say, "Look, I want you to, I want you to cross your arms and close your eyes and just fall back." Hopefully, the person that was supposed to catch them was there. Occasionally, that didn't work out so well, but. But that's what we're supposed to do with the Lord. We're supposed to recognize the goodness of God, recognize the love of God, recognize that He has loved us so much and loves us so much that His, His only concern for us is our best. He wants, he wants His very best for us. And so He started that by beginning our relationship with the very, very best He can offer. And that is a relationship with Him through Christ. You must be born again. There is no other way. You can't even begin to understand what I'm saying to you. If all your relationship with God is, is, the, is, the, is coming to church and going through the, the motions of, of whatever we have on, on the bulletin or the electronic bulletin for that week, you're missing it. You know, he, he wants, 
I, I, I said this several weeks ago, you know, he's tired of weekend visitation. He wants full custody. You ought to just let him have full custody of your heart. You see, he wants the best for you. You think you want the best for you. He does want the best for you. And in order to receive that, you have to love him because you can, you're not going to trust him if you don't love him. If you don't know how much he loves you, how are you going to love him? And if you don't have that love relationship, how are you going to trust him? Just a thought. Proverbs chapter 3, we'll begin in the third verse there. You know, it's okay to depend on notes. And I do, because I can't, I, I, I'll be going through the week, and the Lord will say, oh, hey, look at this. He'll show me this scripture, or he'll, he'll give me that thought, and I'll make a note of it, and I have pages and pages and pages of notes. But there are times that he says, look, I just want you to show up and trust me to bring out of you the word that needs to come out of you. I'll just give you the outline. Here's the scripture. Follow this and, and let me add whatever needs to be added or subtract whatever needs to be subtracted. And, and it's honestly, for somebody like me, it would be easier for me to get up here and stand up and read my notes because I can depend on my computer, maybe. <laughs> Well, I can't depend on Aretha's computer because it's acting weird, but I can depend on my computer. All right? Maybe. I can always trust God. Back before computers, before I actually ever really had, I think I had a, I think I had a terminal, an old IBM terminal that somehow we were connected to a mainframe computer somewhere I was able to use for word processing. But I... I, I had to do this with uh, with the Strong's Concordance, the 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 old fashioned one that has a binding and book and paper pages and and Bibles, and I had to go through different different versions and translations, and I had to look up what what words meant. And I, I'm just I was just as studious then as I am now. But I had I had a I had a morning Bible study, I had an afternoon Bible study, and I had to preach in the evening seven days a week. You can't, and I did that for 10 years, and and not I, but Christ in me. I did that for 10 years. Well, what happens out of that? You learn to trust Him. I would go into, I I got to the point, it was just so hard to try and make all the notes. I would bring my Bible and a concordance and a Bible dictionary and a regular dictionary, and I would would go in for the 3 o'clock class, 3 o'clock class, and I'd say, okay, what do you want to talk about? And they would give me a word or a phrase, and I would look it up, and we would go from there. That's kind of what we're doing today, except I knew kind of where we were going. Thoughts, words, actions. So love is extreme. Love is the principal commandment. The first, the major, the most important commandment is to love the Lord our God with our heart, all our heart and soul and mind and strength. Love our neighbors, ourselves. Love one another as he loves us. He's patterned for us how to love each other, all right? And then trust Him. All right, so here we are. We're in Proverbs chapter 3, starting in the third verse. Do not let mercy and kindness and truth leave you. Instead, let these qualities define you. Bind them securely around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Mercy, kindness, and truth. Extremely important. All right, it's an outward expression of what we've just talked about. About loving God and loving one another, loving each other as Christ loves us, trusting the Lord with all of our own, all of our heart and not leaning on our own understanding. All right, we're learning how to trust Him and do good. We're learning how to dwell in the land that He's given us and feed on His faithfulness. But now what we're being told is, here are some qualities I want to bring out of you. They're already in you. If you have faith in Jesus Christ, if you've made Jesus your Savior and Lord, I'm telling you, you have these qualities in you. If you don't see them reflected, go back to the potter and let him finish the work. Stop trying to finish it yourself. You cannot perfect yourself. All right? He can't, but you can't. You can't. You can do some things. Remember I told you earlier, know that that it's all up to Him. 
do whatever he tells you to do. You know, I was I was reading uh, I was reading a couple things this last week. Moses Moses is trying to give God the excuses about why he can't go do what it is that God's told him to do. And he says, Moses, what's in your hand? He's never going to ask you for something you don't have and, and bringing that to the mix. What's in your hand? And, and, and so Gideon, I'm, I'm reading about Gideon, and Gideon is, in, is, is in, in a wine press, kind of stooped down, threshing wheat, so he doesn't get seen by his enemies and have his food taken away from him. And God says to him, Hail, mighty man of valor. This guy probably doesn't feel all that courageous. And then after God talks to him, he says, go in the power of your might. Really? Against all of these hundreds of thousands of people that are out here. You want me to go? The guy who's hiding in the wine press. Listen, sometimes what God says isn't going to make a lot of sense. But trust him. Trust is extremely important. All right, let's continue on here in Proverbs chapter 3. Write them on the tablet of your heart. So find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord and rely confidently on the Lord with all your heart. And do not rely on your own insight or understanding. In all your ways, know and acknowledge and recognize Him. And He will make your path straight. You know, it's really hard when somebody has, has a solid intellect to, to get them to lay their intellect to the, to the side and trust God because what, what they want to do is trust their intellect. Or, I, 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 you know, there are people who say to you, I, I just can't, I don't understand that faith stuff. I'll, I can only believe what I see. You know what? Somebody tells me that, I'll say, what would you like the Lord to show you? Because He will. You know, we have to trust God to get stuff done. I, I'm, I am a, I'm a meticulous doer. All right, when I have things that I know that I need to have, have done, and, and they're within my skill sets, I will go and I will execute to the best of my ability. And, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm just a worker. It's, it's, it's what I am. Trusting in God is the place where we have to get if we want to see the success happen that He has in mind. He has to be the one. It says, in all your ways acknowledge and recognize Him, and He will make your path straight, re removing obstacles that block your way. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Gosh, pride, arrogance. It, it, just, it just kills the work of God. Pride and arrogance. Stop whatever it is. Pride. The Bible says pride goes before a fall and a haughty spirit before destruction. And, and if you want to walk in the fullness of what God has for you, humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, and He will exalt you in due time. See, I'll speak New King James because I memorized King James. I can take the these and thous out, but that's the point. All right? We, we have to understand it's Him. It says, here's, here's what it says, it will be health to your body, your marrow, your nerves, your sinews, your muscles, all your inner parts, and refreshment, physical well-being to your bones, Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the first fruit of all your crops. Then your barns will be abundantly filled and your vats will overflow with new wine. It, it's a great offering scripture. But, but that's not what it's there for. All right. What we're supposed to do is not give God our leftovers. Don't just give God our spare time on Sunday morning. You know, it was great yesterday. You know, I, I know uh, there are a lot of people. Jackie is down here. And sometimes I think single-handedly taking care of all the, like the mowing and the, the sewer stuff that we had out here. But yesterday I came by three, four, five people here kind of milling around, making sure we got stuff done. You, you know, the doors aren't locked for a reason. You guys can come and do, do this stuff. And if you don't know what to do, call somebody and ask. There's stuff we can do here. And, and, and part of it is we need to get ready. You know, all of these things we're talking about right here, are things that we need to do to prepare for the work that the Lord has for us. I'm, I'm kind of doing this the same way. If I, I, I wasn't in the military, but I have, I have a lot of friends who were. And, and, I, and I had a chance to work, for, uh, work with a general staff military officer on more than one occasion. And I had a chance to work uh, with the former secretary of the Army for a while. So I got a chance to see how communications and order and structure are built in to make something happen. So here's what I'm doing. 
I got an exercise class because you got to be fit for this stuff. Okay, I'm trying to eat what I'm supposed to eat. I'm trying to feed myself and feed my mind with the stuff that I really need to get in my mind and in my heart, which is the Word of God. So, so I'm, I'm doing these things. We're getting together in here. We, we were talking yesterday. You know, we need to yield ourselves more as a congregation and individually to the Spirit of God. You know, I, just because we've always done it a certain way, behold, I will do a new thing now, the Lord says. Will you not know it? Will you not perceive it? Do you not want to be a part of it? Next place we're going is, is, to, is to Matthew chapter 12. Trust in the Lord and do good. You're looking for actions? Do good. Can't figure out what good is? Ask. First, ask Him. You know, if you need a second opinion, ask someone else and then go back and ask Him. Trust in the Lord and do good. We just read this, and I'm back to quoting out of New King James. Dwell in the land and enjoy His faithfulness. Delight yourself in the Lord. He'll give you the desires of your heart. You know, I, I, was, listening, I was listening to the to that song, uh, that, that Psalm 34 that they sing. He'll give you everything. Yes, He will. He'll give you everything. He already did. He said it's finished. Eternity. This little space of time, thank you for finding my nail, this little space of time that is our representative of our life here, if you put these end to end all the way around in a concentric circle and stack them all the way to the roof, it's not anywhere near eternity. We get eternity with Him because of His work that He finished. Matthew chapter 12 beginning in the 35th verse. The good man from his inner good treasure brings out good things, and the evil man from his inner evil treasure brings out evil things. But I tell you, on the day of judgment, people will have to give an account for every careless or useless word they speak. If that doesn't scare you, it ought to. Watch your mouth! You know, it's not just, words aren't just thoughts, words are projectiles. And, and they're, either, they're either softening up and, and opening up ground, that you're, you're driving the enemy back with your words, or you're putting weeds in your own path. You're, you're putting destruction in your own path, why would you do that to yourself? So how is it that you bring out these good treasures? You have to get them in your heart first. How do you do that? Spend time with Him. Stop giving Him just visitation rights. Give Him full custody of your heart and your family around you and the work that you're facing and the ministry that He's called you to. For by your words reflecting your spiritual condition, you will be justified and acquitted of the guilt of sin and by your words rejecting me, you will be condemned and sentenced. So, you know, we've gone from thoughts to words. You know, we talked about this when we were in thoughts. I had an old preacher, this guy that was a was pastor of the church that I ended up pastoring that turned into the homeless shelter. He said, you know, you cannot stop a bird from flying over your head but you can stop a bird from building a nest in your hair. So when you're thinking thoughts that you know are not of Him, then stop for a moment and say, in the name of Jesus, thought, get out of my head. In the name of Jesus, I'm going to think whatever is good and lovely and, and beautiful and honorable. Philippians 4, 7, and 8, whatever is, whatever is positive. I'm going, to, I'm going to think about the positive attributes, uh, attributes of God and how God wants me to be. And how God wants to create this world in His image, in me, and in you, and in all of us. I'm telling you, you know, I, I, had a, I was driving out this, from time to time, you, you know, the Lord just kind of shows me possibilities. Do, do you have, you ever just kind of sit around and think and say, well, gee, Lord, what would, if you're like coming into the middle of this, how would you, what would you do with this? How would you make this happen? You know, and, and I go back to uh, before I even became pastor, I was riding with Jerry over by, Jerry Ray, over by where we live. And, uh, and he said, so what would you, what would you, what do you think we need to do to see the church grow? Good question. 
And, and, and honestly, I have to answer that question moment by moment and day by day because I don't know. But there are times he'll show me things. And, and it's, it's like, you know, like the, you, you touched on this a little bit the other day, but there was a time when the septic system was, was br broken and it, it kept like having problems. And, and, uh, and, and the Lord just said, you know, uh, I'm trying to get all the refuse out because I, because I got a plan and, and, and looking at, looking at cleaning up the physical plant, making it as, as clean as it possibly can be is a, is a sign of what happens on the inside of us. So if we've got God cleaning us up. We're going to take good care of the stuff he puts in our hands. So I'm, I'm, I'm driving by the front and, and, and he said to me from time to time, I, I drive by just about every other time or so I drive him by the country store. I, I, I'll, I'll thank the Lord. Occasionally I'll, I'll get out and I'll stop and I'll go over to the country store and I'll go, thank you, Father, for providing for the resources to acquire this and to use this for your glory because I believe he's got a plan for that. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm driving, I had to drive my grandson in and, into town a couple times and back and for school this week. And, I, and I'm coming back and, and, uh, and he says, you know, I want some people who don't live in the DMR to come to church here. I said, yeah, I know you told me about that. He said, I want you to, I want you to talk to, uh, I want you to talk to one of these ranchers when the time is right and, and get some land to put a parking space out here closer to the front and just run a shuttle back and forth. I said, okay, that sounds pretty cool. And, he, and I said, so what, you know, a couple acres? He said, no, like 20 or 25. I'm like, what, what do you have in mind? I don't know, because he hasn't shown me that yet. I, I, don't, I, I don't know about you, but I, he doesn't give me everything all at once because it would probably overwhelm me. You know, as, as I started asking him for impossible things 20-ish years ago and still am in the habit of doing that, what I realize is he is able to do exceeding abundantly above all I can ask or imagine according to the power at work in me, his spirit at work in me. So, so in John chapter 14, and, and we're going to kind of wind up with this. I, I've, I have quoted this time and time again, so I'm actually going to read it out of the Amplified today. If we understand that God's love is so immense that He has done everything possible to reach those who need salvation. And now, as the extension of everything possible, He has said to us, all of us, no exclusions. If you're naming the name of Jesus Christ, no exclusions. Go into all the world and make disciples. Teach them everything I taught you. And I'm with you. That's the word from God. He, he, he's not willing that anybody should perish. And, and I bring that up a lot because that's how expansive his love is. And I don't care how much you've messed up or you think you've messed up or someone says you've messed up or how messed up someone thinks you are and they're completely off base, whatever the thing is, get that out of your head and, and figure out who you are in Christ. Because the Bible says, if you're in Christ, you're a new creation. All of that old garbage has passed away. And all, all the, all, everything that's in you has, has become new. And if you're out here and you mess up, you, you recognize, hey, I, I sinned. You know what? God loves good news and bad news at the same rate of speed. When you recognize that, go to Him with a heart that's repentant and say, I turn away from that. And I, re I receive your forgiveness. He'll forgive you in that moment. Because why? Because you have a responsibility. You have a position at the net that nobody else can fill. There are people that nobody else in this world can reach but you. God wants to use you to reach those people. Are you interested in His will or your will? You know, Jesus was in the garden and He said, Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will as you will. Are you surrendered to Christ today to the point where you're willing to say, not as I will, but as you will? That's where he wants us. John chapter 14, beginning in the 12th verse. I assure you and most solemnly say to you, anyone who believes in me as Savior will also do the things that I do. And he will do even greater things than these 
and extent and outreach because I am going to the Father and I will do whatever you ask in my name as my representative. This I will do so that the Father may be glorified and celebrated in the Son. If you ask anything, if you ask me anything in my name as my representative, I will do it. If you really love me, you will keep and obey my commandments. What were the commandments? Love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and mind and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love one another as I love you. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy his faithfulness. He has great things in store for you. Why? Because he wants to broaden the conduit of your life so that he can push blessings through to the lives of others. You know what? When I worked with the first group of people who were homeless and I saw what God could do, I saw what a little kindness and love applied with the word of God would do in their lives. And I'm, I'm seeing those results now still in the lives of people that I managed to stay in contact with 30 years later. It's amazing what God can do when we let him do his work. And then he gave me a vision. What, what, if, what, if, what if somebody, what if the church, you see, and, and this is, this is, this is way more important than church socials. It's way more important than Starbucks in the church. Get out there and, 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 and show the kindness and compassion of God to the widow, the orphan, and the stranger within our gates. Go out to those who are lost and show them God's kindness, not his judgment, his kindness. He'll take care of the judgment part. You just love. Love your neighbor as yourself. Trust in him and do good. Let not mercy, read it. Let not mercy and kindness and truth leave you. Instead, let these qualities define you. Bind them securely around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. We're going to get more into actions in the next week or two. It's possible I may not be here this, this next Sunday. I don't know yet. I'm not sure. I'm ready to go see my brother whenever the Lord opens the door. Please be praying about that. We had we had a lender who was, who was ready to transfer money to the company tomorrow, and now he's giving us a little bit of a delay. I'm, I'm just car crying out to Jesus because I know there are alternatives for that. I know he's got an answer. And I know that my brother, I just gonna, I'm going to stand in agreement with my brother that he will not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. See, that's where we need to be. We need to have that boldness in our lives to speak what God says about a situation and trust Him, just as the Word said, trust Him to bring it to pass. We have to be willing to commit that to Him. We have to be willing to cross our arms, close our eyes, and fall into the arms of God because He will catch you 100% of the time. Let's pray. Ruth, could you come? Just... Lord, we bless you. We thank you for the time you've taken, the time you've had with me this morning. I feel like we've come into your throne room, we've heard from you, I've heard from you. Lord, I pray that whatever message you are bringing through me, that it makes sense, and, and, and even if I'm just an incidental part of it, that it makes sense and it, and it, and it does what you've said in your word, that your word will not return to you void, but it will accomplish the purpose that you've sent it for. Father, believing, trusting, loving, those aren't just words. They're actions. They're verbs. They require commitment on our part. Let us today reflect on the level of our commitment to you. Lord, it's, it's not a matter of being committed to a building or a group of people per se. It's about being committed to you and letting you guard our hearts and guide our hearts. Lord, I, I just see the capacity of this congregation as you build it and grow it, as you, as you build us up, as you mature us 
that you bring others in for us to disciple, as you send us out to find and bring and make those disciples and teach the word that you have for them to them. Father, that you are expanding in a magnificent way the impact that the people who first were meeting under a tree and said, you know, we should build a church. Well, they built a building. You're building the church right now. Let us be built up in you to accomplish the purpose that you have in store so that we can we can shed abroad your kindness and bring glory to your name in every moment of our day every day of our life in Jesus name Amen. Father we get the fellowship on Sundays because we put it on our hearts and bring it together. And it is part of our celebration of you to get to know each other a little better and to fellowship, to be a body, not just an audience. Help us to draw closer and closer bless the food we're about to receive. Bless the time of fellowship that it represents in Jesus' name. All right, let's do our song. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future. And life is worth the living just because he lives. In the name of Jesus, I command a release of every blessing that he has ordained for you this day and every day in this coming week. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.